Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be unboxing and testing the power delivery of the Ugreen USB-C 65W 2-port GAN charger that I recently bought. I'll be testing it with a bunch of game console controllers, an iPad Pro and a Nintendo Switch to see if they work with it and what the charge is like on each. A quick disclaimer, I paid for everything myself and this video is not sponsored. I've put links in the description for the charger along with the USB-C cables and the two power meters I used. If you like the video, please tap the like button and consider subscribing. With that said, let's get to the unboxing. A quick tour of the box. On the front, there are some key points about the charger. Nothing on the right. Nothing on the top. And nothing on the left. On the bottom, there's a barcode. And on the back, there is a specification of the charger, along with some details of the manufacturer and safety and compliance standard logos. Anyway, let's open this up by cutting the two pieces of tape on the back. And there's the charger. Let's see what's under this cardboard. The user manual. And a user instruction guide, which is really a list of compliance declarations. Anyway, I'll put that to one side and take the charger out of the bag. Looking at the charger, we have a Ugreen logo on the front. Nothing much on the two sides or the top. The bottom has two USB-C ports. And the back has the three pins for the UK socket. It is a relatively compact charger, but the three pins don't fold down like some other compact chargers do that are marketed mostly for traveling with. As a side note, there's no USB-C cables included in the box, so you'll need to supply your own. Let's quickly go over the specifications of the charger. It supports power delivery 2.0 and 3.0, quick charge 2.0, 3.0 and 4.0, Programmable power supply, which is 25 watts for Samsung super fast charge and battery charging 1.2 fast charge protocols. In terms of what the supported output voltage and amperages are, we've got 5 volts at 3 amps, 9 volts at 3 amps, 12 volts up to 3 amps, 15 volts up to 3 amps and 20 volts at 3.25 amps. The 65 watt can be shared over both USB-C ports but if you need to use the full 65 watts on one device, like a laptop for example, you can only get 65 watts max on the port labeled USB-C C2. Moving on to the testing, let's just go over what I used to actually test the charger. First, I had a wall socket power meter to get the overall power usage, an inline USB-C power meter to get the power draw at the port level, two USB-C cables that are rated up to a 100 watt charging minimum, an iPad Pro 11 inch 2018 model, a PS4 and PS5 controller, a Switch Pro controller, a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig, and a Nintendo Switch that I tested in both docked and handheld modes. After testing the charger with those devices, here's the results. The numbers are what I saw after around a minute of charging time. To begin with, all the devices were compatible with the charger, and for consistency, they were all connected to port C1. There was an exception for the iPad Pro later on after I initially tested it because I moved it to port C2, but that was just to maintain a shared power draw on the charger. So the iPad Pro, that used 15 volts and 1.24 amps. The PS4 controller used 5.09 volts and 0.11 amps. PS5 controller was 5.10 volts and 0.53 amps. The Switch Pro controller was 5.10 volts and 0.42 amps. 
the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig was 5.10 volts at 0.48 amps. The switch when undocked in handheld mode was 15 volts at 0.72 amps. And the switch when docked was 15 volts at 0.57 amps. I did also test the switch docked with the official Nintendo Switch power adapter, and that was 15.2 volts and 0.49 amps. And just a note, when I did move the iPad Pro onto port C2, there was no real difference in the output. Now, I would caution the results of the Nintendo Switch. The Switch can be very particular about its power adapter. Although the Ugreen charger did work, I would recommend only using the official Nintendo Switch charger just to play safe. The last point I would make of the testing is that with the Raspberry Pi, I didn't notice any power LED warnings about the power being delivered. So to round this up, is the charger worth getting? Yes. I ended up actually getting a second one for my office so I can say it's worth it. But like I said before, if you're getting it to use with a Nintendo Switch, I would recommend the official Nintendo adapter for that. Otherwise, for a phone, tablet or game controller, it should do the job of charging them quite nicely. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.